Justin. All right. All right. Good afternoon. <laughs> so um, today we have a new tester. Uh, this one is a dragon fruit, but instead is a guava. So this one is a seedless guava. It's not a Taiwanese crystal seedless guava that is been caught so far. So this one is from my sister's tree, but I grafted on my tree. So this is the first year fruit on my grafted tree. So the fruit is about this size, a little bit bigger, and this is the smallest size. So um, two years ago when I ate, it's completely seedless, not like a Taiwanese seedless guava that have like few seeds. So this one is a seedless, seedless. So let's cut it open and see. It's still in a small size. Okay, let's wait it to see. It's in about 278, so a little bit more than half a pound. So let's cut it. Oh my God. Uh, the only thing that influence the seeds or seed list is if it's been grown next to another guava tree that cross. have a seed. Uh, yes, okay, it's been pollinated. So it might have one or two seeds, but this one so far is good. So let's Drum see. Roll. Uh, yeah. So you see any seed? It's completely seedless. Yeah, so let's cut this one open. Usually with the seedless guava, they have a little bit deeper enter. For some reason, it always have this. Even though with the smaller one, it still had that kind of issue that I've seen. So let's cut this small one. So this one have a little bit of this one, but still seedless. So, but let's try the big one first because it'll be better. Okay, let me see. And I'm gonna cut this part off. Awesome. Yeah. So this one is completely seedless and it's dense and crunchy. So let's try that with my friend. When I cut it, there's no seed, right? Is there any seed? I don't know, I'm trying to find one seed just to grow, see if it's grownable. It's clearer to me. I think my babysitter cleaned the table, so don't worry about it. No worries. All okay. right. Let's try it, try it, try it, let me know. Okay. Okay. Oh my god, it is completely seedless. All right, so not even one seed. Mm. It's crunchy. It's crunchy. You got a little bit of sour to it. No tart though. No tart. Flavor is complex though. You got the sour. The middle is sweet. But you know normally with guava, like the out outside rings are like normally they have that little tart. Mm -hmm. This one don't have that tart. And a lot of people, they peel the skin to eat, but actually have a lot of fibers and a lot of uh, nutrients inside the skin. So usually I eat with the skin. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they don't like it, eat like an apple, but you can eat the skin. This, the guava skin is edible and it's really good. I would say it's a little bit soft the inside because um, even though it's seedless, but the, um, the, um, the texture of it is still softer than a little bit toward the skin outside. So inside is soft and outside is crunchier, but still very uh, kind of crunchy that um, I would say that it's kind of traditional Asian guava crunchy one, but this one has a little bit more complex. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to say, but um, it's not sweet or it's mm -hmm. not plain, it's not watery. It's less water than regular guava. That's what make it a little crunchier. Yeah. Right? No, it's definitely half the crunch. Um, you can compare that to the traditional oiseli. Oh, and sorry. then um, the outside, like I said, is it, it has that tartness, but the skin, the, the traditional oiseli, they have that bitterness that on the outside ring, nor toward the, toward the skin size. But this is actually, it has the sweet, it have the sour. It's really good. Mm -hmm. And the advantage of this is you can eat the whole thing. So you don't have to waste the seed. The seed is edible, but not a lot of people That's if like you get seed, seed in this one. That's if you get seed, because this one is seedless. Mm -hmm. this is seedless. So if you like seed, then it's not this one. But if you like something not seedless, not seed, then this one is the one. I have hope for my tree at home right now. Yeah, you can craft. I can give you a sound. To no, I, I, don't, I don't know. My variety is the same as yours. But um, they told me it's a Taiwanese seedless. It's not a semi for both of them. Yeah. It's not the same. The Taiwanese seedless, they still have one or few mm -hmm. seeds. So you have to be careful because sometimes you start seedless, you eat, you can break your tooth. <laughs> they have that. I was going to show you a picture. Mm -hmm. 
So I grow two of them for a few years and the original growth the Taiwanese and my friend gave me uh, even the grafted one and the uh, air layer one. Mm -hmm. But then I compare, I grow both, it's totally different. So I grow this one right now instead of the uh, Taiwanese seedless. But it depends on what you're looking for, that is for my opinion. But you know, some people like the texture or like the taste of that one better, mm -hmm. then you can grow that. It just is my opinion. Is when I talk about seedless, I have to be seedless. <laughs> When I talk about no seed, I don't want to be okay. Watch for two few seeds, you know, like one, two seeds. So, in order to get a seed list, you have to grow by itself, or you have to have a different flowering schedule. Like, mm -hmm. you have to graft it on the grower tree that have a different flowering schedule. I like graft it into my Taiwanese guava that mm -hmm. it flower first, and this one lay the flowers. Mm -hmm. But about like a month different. So, um, the other one's still ongoing, but this one ripe first. Mm -hmm. So I think this one has a shorter time from the buds to uh, be ready because small yeah. size. The other one is bigger, like mm -hmm. Osali, but it's a little bit different, the like seedling of Osali. Got it. So it takes long any time tips, to mature. Any tips in terms of how when you graft? Because um, I speak to a lot of gardener friends. Normally when you're grafting guavas, I mean it's not as simple as uh, grafting like cherimoyo, etamoya. Um, they, seem, they seem to take the, a lot, the, the scion a little bit better. When it comes to guava, I feel like when you're grafting, the chance of success is like kind of low. Mm -hmm. Do you keep the like the humidity inside the bag high or? No, I use a butter tape okay. and I wrap the scion. Uh -huh. So make sure that it's not dried out. Okay. And for the grafting, I think guava, you cannot use a cleft. Mm -hmm. I use a side graft or the wedge. Okay. So which is, you know, you cut one slant, the other slant, you wrap it like this. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be really tight. Got it's it. okay just to make secure and don't touch it. I would say guava is the same as jabo tikaba. The, 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 uh, the sion, you know, the inside is so thick and mm -hmm. so dense. So it's hard to make a nice slant. Mm -hmm. And it's also take forever for it to kind of like um, heal and seal. So I would say take really long time to see if it's successful or not. Mm -hmm. And usually guava, they have a very short period of time to graft. Mm -hmm. Right now, I don't think it's a good time to graft guava. But it's okay to graft, but it's not the best time. The best time for me is about, like, I would say that uh, February or March, when you start to see a little bit of, you know, like a new you should, leaf you grow. grow. So that is the best time for guava because it shoots out a lot of hormone or healing purposes. Okay. This one is okay, but I think this time is a good to air layer. Mm -hmm. Uh, air layer for guava is the best so far instead of graft. The graft, guava itself is really heavy. When you graft, you have to make sure they're close to the Stays. stem because when it here break. Uh, I broke one, so um, I don't recommend grafting compared to air layer. But Got if it. you have to, graft close to the stem. Because it, it air layer easily. I mean, yeah. two months to get a full root on the uh, air layer. Yeah, I've, I've, I've successfully air layer a couple um, trees. But grafting is a very different story. Yeah, I would say that even though I grafted Cherimoya at 95% uh -huh. successful, for guava I would say only 60, a little bit more than that. I haven't ventured over to grafting guava just because I hear the, you know, like the, the fact that the successful rate is rare. And so I'm still trying to learn all the techniques in terms of grafting guavas. Because that's what I want to do next year. Okay. I mean, Cherimoya, I, I, the, um, the rootstock that I have at home, like all branch I grafted, is all successful. Yeah, so practice make it perfect. Sometimes it just needs some, you know, like certain technique that guava like. I would say that one people are successful guava, they keep being successful. Mm -hmm. But for the one who not yet into it, it takes a little bit longer time to get used to the way it like. Definitely. Like my friend grab the jabo tikaba, the big, like I would say this kind of the diameter of the trunk. And then one time successful, i show you in a bit, uh -huh. the Kaba. So he get from the Jungsi flower or something variety uh -huh. and grab into my Sabra. And just one time and big Jung and it's successful and fruit in the same wow. year. So I think it depends when you're familiar with it, it's easy. For the one who said, oh, I grab for was successful and I said, uh -huh. why so hard? It just depends. It yeah. practice. It, it just, yeah. Take time. All right, so that's a seedless guava. You can take some home. So this one my seedless guava. But like I said, it's never be hundred percent as no seed because I see some seed in certain year. All right, back to the seedless guava. Because if you grow next to the another on your neighbor have the seed guava, it might have some seeds. 
All right. So thank you and have a nice day. It's delicious. Thank you.